What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Nurse Bass back with another video and I'm super excited to be bringing this one to you. We are about to kick 2020 off right. We're entering this decade getting back to my roots here on YouTube, providing you guys with that educationally driven content, the content that is so needed to discuss these concepts that are so difficult to grasp, but ones that are so important and crucial and are part of the building blocks of the foundation that are going to produce the best kind of healthcare provider you can be. And so I'm super excited. This is going to be the first installment in my Grind Ed. This is going to be education for the grinders, man, people out there who are driven, people where we can come together, share one like mind, be on the same page, and learn some new material and uh, be excited about doing so. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into the anatomy of the heart. Are you listening? Nurse Pass. As you can see, we have a lot of different structures to look at in this diagram. Um, there are also some things to note here, some things that I want to point out right from the get-go. Um, first of all, let's give you guys a little legend here. Now, some of this stuff may be self-explanatory to some of you, but we don't know what... Uh, level everybody's starting at so let's just give you guys a little bit of a legend here so our red colors here our red colors stand for our oxygenated blood and our blue colors stand for our deoxygenated blood just a little bit of a legend there for you guys just as a point of reference so what I want to do is I want to kind of break down all of these structures to give you guys an idea of what the anatomy of the heart looks like. And I want to start at, quote unquote, the point of origin, if you will. Where is our blood returning from our body? We have our blood returning from all of the tissues of our body. It is now deoxygenated blood. The deoxygenated blood returns back to our heart by way of these two apparatuses here. These stand for the superior vena cable and the inferior. And the blood gets deposited where? What is this apparatus? The blood from the superior and inferior vena cable gets deposited directly into the right atrium. So deoxygenated blood comes in from the superior vena cava and from the inferior vena cava like so both heading directly down toward the right ventricle. Now the blood, this deoxygenated blood has to pass through this white looking structure. What is this white looking structure? This is a valve. As you can see, there are four different white structures on this, uh, on the heart. So that means there are four valves that we're gonna be concerned with when discussing the anatomy of the heart. So the blood is passing from the right atrium into the right ventricle by way of the tricuspid valve. Hey guys, real quick, I just wanted to let you all know about this amazing company called Nursing.com, whose sole purpose is to help prepare aspiring and new nurses for success in this rewarding career. Links down below. They have four brand new academies available for whatever stage of the grind you're in. The Pre-Nursing Academy for those aspiring, the Nursing Student Academy for those in the trenches, the absolutely stellar NCLEX Prep Academy with over 99% pass rate, and a program designed to help the new grad nurse navigate this new and intimidating profession. Just pick the path that's right for you. But if funds are tight, don't worry because nursing.com has a ton of other free resources available to you as well. One day, patient lives will be in your hands. Study like it. Links are in the description. Love you guys. Grind on. Blood then gets ejected during systole from the right ventricle and it travels up into the pulmonary arteries. And the blood is then sent to the lungs to be oxygenated. But whenever the blood passes from the right ventricle up into the pulmonary arteries, again, we can see we are passing through another valve. This time, 
What valve are we passing through? The pulmonic semilunar valve. Blood, deoxygenated blood goes up to the lungs. It gets reoxygenated, then turning red, as we can see from our diagram. Not literally, but just for diagram purposes. We now have oxygen-rich blood returning back to the heart. How is this oxygen-rich blood coming back to the heart? It's coming back by means of these four little apparatuses. And these are the pulmonary veins. Now it's important to note, what have we always been taught? Oxygenated blood is pumped away from our heart by our arteries. Arteries away, arteries away. We've always been taught that. And deoxygenated blood returns back to the heart by way of veins. Deoxygenated blood traveling through veins. As you can note by the colors that our legend <laughs> so, so beautifully describes, if you can look at our pulmonary arteries and veins, this is the only time in the body where oxygen-rich blood is carried by veins and deoxygenated blood is carried by arteries. It's in the pulmonary system. Kind of interesting. So, we now have oxygen-rich blood coming in from our pulmonary arteries back and they are pouring into this little chamber here called our left atrium. We have our right atrium, our right ventricle. Now we are in our left atrium. And as you can imagine, the normal flow, uh, flow of blood as we've been able to see, blood is gonna flow from our left atrium down into our left ventricle. Once again, this blood is having to pass through a valve between our left atrium and left ventricle, another AV valve. And this time, it is passing through and now that we have completed our purpose of pumping blood to the lungs we have good oxygen rich blood now deposited in our left ventricle again with systole we have an ejection of blood from this left ventricle traveling all the way up into the aorta for blood to then be distributed to all of the rest of the tissues of our body and don't forget as we can see our blood had to pass through another valve we have two semilunar valves in our heart as we've already noticed we have the pulm pulmonic semilunar valve associated with blood going into the pulmonary system well, here, once again, we are going through another semilunar valve, but this time, pulmonic semilunar valve to the pulmonary system, our blood is going to the aorta, and this time, our blood is going to our aortic semilunar valve. And after the blood, this oxygen-rich blood, gets deposited to all of our tissues and cells of our body, to keep our body alive, Krebs cycle, all that I'm not gonna go into. It then returns deoxygenated again back into our body. A lot of arrows, a lot to digest here. And there's so much more to the anatomy that we haven't even touched on, but I wanted to keep it basic and simple for this first introductory course. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I, I hope it's helpful. Screenshot this. Come back to this. If this is a tough concept or you and your cohort are going over this in class, feel free to share. I hope that it's beneficial to everybody. I hope it made sense. I hope you can read my chicken scratch and uh, I hope you took benefit away from it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.